ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಸದಾಶಿವ ಸಂಭ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮತ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ರಿನೌನ್ಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಶಿವ ಫಾಲೋಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಮಿಡಲ್ ಬೈ ಶ್ರೀಮತ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಶಂಕರ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅವರ್ ಓನ್ ಗುರು ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇರಾ ಐ ಸೆಲ್ಯೂಟ್ ಆಲ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಗುರು ಟ್ರೆಡಿಷನ್ ಟುಡೇ ಇಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಆಸ್ಪಿಷಿಯಸ್ ಡೇ ದಿ ಬರ್ತ್ ಡೇ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀಮತ್ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಹ್ ಬೀನ್ ಆಸ್ಟ್ ಟು ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಲೈಫ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲೀಗಸಿ ಆಫ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀಮತ್ ಶಂಕರ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಫಾಲೋ ಸನಾತನ ಧರ್ಮ ಎಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಐಡಿಯರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದಿ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಂದೂಯಿಸಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಮ್ ದಿ ವೆರಿ ನೇಮ್ ಆದಿಶಂಕರ ಆರ್ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಈಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಆಸ್ಪೇಷಿಯಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಪೋಸ್ಟ್ ವೇದಿಕ್ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಪೋಸ್ಟ್ ವೇದಿಕ್ ಏರಾ it was sri shankaracharya who took up the task of reestablishing hinduism on a solid foundation in a society which was floating between agnosticism and certain crude practices in the name of religion hindus world over consider shrimad shankaracharya to be the greatest of all teachers his philosophy that he propounded based on the teachings of the upanishads is undoubtedly the most authentic exposition on the advaita vedanta his stern logic fearless exposition together his unshakable faith in the vedic scriptures speak volumes about the greatness of his towering personality acharya shankara's life and legacy is a very fascinating episode today on his birthday let us try to recollect a few incidents from his life and ponder upon how important and valued are his contribution to the country and to all of us many of you may be aware of the important incidents of shankara's life even then to remember them on an occasion like this have certain significance they remind us to remember how wonderful a life was that of the acharya shankara was born in a poor brahmin family of kaladi in kerala state very close to kochin in those days kaladi was under the cheranad or the kingdom of cherans his father's name was shiva guru and mother aryamba they had been married for a long time but had no children both shiva guru and aryamba were highly devoted to lord shiva and they used to pray for years with utmost sincerity to their lord that they may be blessed with a child it is said that as years passed on one day during her meditation aryamba had a vision of lord shiva who promised her that he would be born as her child this vision was so very vivid aryamba felt very happy that she is going to be a mother at last a mother of shiva himself what more great blessedness to be sought soon after this vision aryamba conceived and then gave birth to a boy whom she named shankara remembering her chosen deity various accounts suggest that shankara was born in ad 788 
When Shankara was just a three-year-old child, he lost his father. As he was born in a Nambudri family, a Brahmin family of Kerala, Shankara was initiated into the Gayatri Mandra as early as a five-year-old. Shankara proved to be a brilliant boy, a child prodigy. He mastered all the four Vedas and the six auxiliary scriptures of Vedas known as Vedangas in a local Gurukula, the school of these days, at a very tender age. While Vedas are the primary scriptures of Hinduism, Vedangas deal with the process of gaining knowledge spoken of in the Vedas. Shankara mastered all of them. Right from his childhood, Shankara was more inclined towards a religious and a spiritual life. He did not show much interest in worldly affairs. He wanted to become a sannyasin, a monk, which his mother disapproved. She wanted him to get married and lead his life as a householder and be at home. Then, when he was just eight years old, an amazing incident took place. As a child, Shankara used to have his bath in a nearby river, a river called Purna, Purna Nadi. And one day, as usual, when he stepped into the river, all of a sudden, a crocodile caught hold of his leg and it started dragging him. Shankara, unable to save himself, cried out for help. People gathered and some onlookers rushed to his house to inform his mother that child Shankara is in danger. Aryamba, reaching on the bank of the river, was shocked to find a large crocodile engulfing her son. The poor mother could do nothing in that situation. Shankara was going to die. Now, according to the then tradition, every Hindu was supposed to enter the fourth phase of the life before one's death. And Shankara was going to die. And this fourth phase of the life is called sannyasa. The other three being Brahmacharya, Garhastya and Vanaprastha. Therefore, Shankara cried out to his mother, Mother, grant me permission to become sannyasin. In desperation, having no other choice, Mother Aryamba ultimately gave her consent to Shankara. It is said that as Aryamba permitted Shankara to take what is known as the Apat Sanyasa, renunciation at a point of danger, the crocodile let go of his foot. Shankara was saved. Shankara came out unharmed from the river. Then, with the blessings of his mother, he renounced his worldly connections of family, wealth and everything related to his mundane existence. He considered the consent of his mother as a great boon and promised her that he would be at her service if she so needed. Shankara then wanted to get formally initiated into the sacred order of sannyasa and therefore he set out to seek a competent teacher, a competent guru to guide him in this direction. He decided to go towards the northern direction of India. Remember, he was 
still a child, a boy of just eight years. For days and months, Shankara traveled on foot, eating whatever he got on his travel, sleeping wherever he found a shelter, and eventually, at last, he met an old sannyasi on the banks of river Narmada in a small hermitage. This sannyasi was a well-known monk by name Acharya Govinda Bhagavad Pada, in short Acharya Govinda Pada. He was very popular a monk and was a disciple of another famous saint by name Acharya Gaudapada. Gaudapada is the sannyasin who has written the greatest ever commentary on the Mandukya Upanishad, which is popularly known, the commentary is popularly known as Mandukya Karika. Shankara prostrated before Acharya Govindapada and narrated to him his life story. And then with hands folded, he requested Acharya to accept him as his disciple. Acharya Govindapada was very pleased to see such a young man and he greeted him fervently. Looking at Shankara, Govindapada realized that a long time promise by his guru, Godapada Acharya, is going to be fulfilled now. He had a smile in his face because his guru had told him a long time ago that an exceptionally great soul would be his disciple to carry on his work onward to greater heights and that time has come. Thus mentally satisfied, Acharya Godapada without any hesitation initiated Shankara into the sacred order of sannyasa. Soon Shankara became a favorite disciple of Govindapada Acharya and he stayed with his guru for the time being. Shankara's first effort was to get acquainted himself with the foundations of the great philosophy, the Advaita Vedanta. Now, India has a long and unbroken tradition of religious and spiritual culture. Unlike in the Semitic religion, in Hinduism, it is much linked with its philosophies called Darshanas. In the West, philosophies are separate and religion is separate. They don't go hand in hand. But in India, Darshanas go always hand in hand with its scriptures. Darshanas are designated as Veda Upangas, authentic philosophies linked with the Vedas. There are six Darshanas, Sankhya, Yoga, Nyaya, Vaisheshika, Mimamsa and Vedanta. Darshanas can be best understood as instruction manuals. They explain, step by step, the progression of gaining knowledge. It starts almost with the basics, leading to the end, the fullness of all knowledge. The Nyaya philosophy deals with the very fundamental concept of loss. And in Vedanta, we find the completion of knowledge of the totality and how does everything fit into it. They are not mere theories, but they explain how one can experience them. Vedanta of the Vedas, which is known as the Upanishads, and Vedanta as a darshana, as philosophy, they are two different things. 
With reference to the Vedas, the term Vedanta implies the Upanishadic portion of the Vedas because they are to be found towards the end of the Vedas, Veda Anta. That's why it is Vedanta. But as a philosophy, Vedanta has many dimensions. Advaita Vedanta being the most unique among them. And she Shankaracharya was to become not just an exponent of it, but the harbinger of that Advaita Vedanta. Another important aspect of the Indian tradition is the Guru or a teacher imparts knowledge to his disciples in a certain ways. The disciples in turn impart that knowledge to his or her disciples the way it was given to them. Knowledge is thus transmitted from generation to generation very methodically. That is how from the time immemorial the scriptures of India and their wisdom have come down to us. That is what called as the Guru Parampara, the tradition of the Gurus. The unbroken tradition of wisdom through noble teachers. Sanatana Dharma believes that that's how the intricacies of a long-lasting tradition continues, survives. Shankara, true to this tradition, absorbed everything that his Guru imparted to him. During those days of his stay with his Guru, besides studying the Advaita Vedanta, he also took up to writing. He at first composed several stotras or hymns and thereafter attempted on some philosophical treatise, Prakarana Grandhas, they are called Prakarana Grandhas. It was during this period that he wrote his famous commentary on one of the Upanishads, the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad. Though miraculous, one of the incidents occurred during Sri Shankara's stay on the banks of the Narmada is a very popular one. Once, he along with the other disciples of Acharya Govinda Pada were meditating in their cave located very close to the river. It was raining heavily outside and the level of the waters of Narmada was rising steadily. It rose to the level of the entrance of the cave and having observed what was happening, Shankara took his kamandalu, his water bowl, a small vessel made, of, made out of wood. He placed his kamandalu in front of the cave and by chanting certain mantras, he forced the waters of Narmada into this bowl. Now, how that much huge a quantity of water can enter into such a small kamandalu will be a question. That would remain always a wonder and never be answered. But hearing about this miraculous incident, somebody was very happy. That was Acharya Govinda Bhagavad Pada. The Acharya remembered the prophecy of the legendary Badrayana Maharshi. Badrayana Maharshi was a great sage and he had long ago stated that the best commentary on the scripture Brahma Sutras would be written by someone who terms the river Narmada. That was the incident took place here. Feeling very elated and proud of Shankara, Acharya Govindapada then asked Shankara to write commentaries to the Prasthanatraya. Prasthanatraya, they are the triple canon of 
सनातन धर्म दे आर द ब्रह्म सूत्रस द मेजर उपनिषद्स एंड श्रीमद् भगवत गीता दे आर नोन एज प्रस्थान त्रया इट वाज अ टाइम व्हेन द बुद्धिस्टिक रिलीजन रूल्ड ओवर मोस्ट पार्ट्स ऑफ इंडिया especially that of the northern region hinduism by then was divided into various sects also varieties of ritualistic practices had taken to predominance over the actual sacred and all encompassing philosophical religion of the vedas buddhism fundamentally denied the existence of god denied the very authority of the vedas itself it was at this juncture of religious developments in india that shankara in his unique way set out on a mission that was to change the outlook of the religious and philosophical temperament of the country and its people shankara decided to revamp the vast vedic literature though in sanskrit his language was very simple and his style easy to everyone's everyone's comprehension and understanding with a certain amount of sanskrit knowledge anyone can read and understand the works of sri shankara the details of or the details regarding the later years of shankara's life are somewhat obscure but it is generally accepted that he traveled widely in different parts of india participated in great many philosophical debates with the religious scholars of his times and also imparted teachings of advaita vedanta to his disciples the most authentic and acclaimed biography of sri shankaracharya is by his disciples disciple by name sri madhava vidyarinya and also his biographies by others all of them provide certain details of his journey to the acharya hood it is stated that at the age of 15 the boy shankara reached kashi and set out to spread the advaita vedanta the philosophy of advaita as commanded by his guru govinda pada acharya he also started writing the commentaries on the prasthana traya that is the brahma sutras the upanishads and the bhagavad gita it was at kashi or varanasi or today's banaras that he wrote his all famous bhajagovindam stotra by then he was popularly and fondly came to be known as sri shankara acharya sri shankara in a very short time established himself as an authority on the vedanta based on advaita it was here again at the kashi yet another incident of miracle happened one day when sri shankara was standing on a river bank he saw some of his clothes by mistake were left out on the other bank of the river where his disciples were resting he called out his disciples and asked if someone could get his close to him as they could not find any boats in the vicinity they could not venture to cross the river but then one of his disciples by name sanandana without a second thought started walking towards the waters of the river the wonder was as sanandana placed his foot on the water beneath of every one of 
his step appeared a beautifully bloomed lotus supporting the step he was totally unaware of the immediate situation he was so devoted to his guru and to the cause of his guru he just kept walking and as the disciple reached the shore and handed over the clothes to sri shankara he embraced him and called him o sanandana o padmapada sanandana thus became known as padmapada the lotus feeted this padmapada was to become one of sri shankara's foremost disciples it was in favor of this disciple that acharya shankara later wrote one of his vedantic treatises named atma bodha or the awakening of the atman this book it can be considered a textbook on shankara's philosophy a book thoroughly explaining the advaita vedanta in detail it was around this time that sri shankara received the information from kalidi about his mother's grave illness he knew that his mother was close to her last days on earth and he was reminded of his promise to her that he would be with her when she needed him most so he rushed to kalidi at once and was at her bedside while aryamba breathed her last after the demise of his mother shri shankara had to endure the blow of another death the death of his beloved guru shri govinda bhagavad pada he thereafter decided to leave kashi for prayag it was in prayag that shri shankara met the well known scholar and ritualist by name shri kumari labhatta the champion of the karma mimamsa philosophy or the path of the great rituals karma mimamsa is popularly known as the purva mimamsa whereas vedanta is referred to as the uttara mimamsa shri kumari labhatta was then a person of advanced age and he was not in good health he was a south indian brahmana who devoted his entire life in the struggle against the heretical doctrines of jains and buddhists he was highly devoted to the vedic injunctions but he believed greatly only in the rituals of the vedas kumari lava was a very inspiring personality commanding great respect in the society in fact he was one person who would be remembered as someone who was greatly responsible for the decline of the charvaka philosophy of atheism and even buddhism in india on his visit to kumarila sri shankara found him to be very old he was doing his penance seeking a slow death which he said was a means of atonement to redeem himself from his karmas sri shankara as directed by shri kumari labhatta then proceeded to meet bhatta's foremost disciple by name sri vishwarupa otherwise known as mandana mishra he was popular by the name mandana mishra at this point of time sri shankara also had a debate with another mimamsa scholar by name sri prabhakara the meeting of acharya shankara with mandana mishra his debate at first with mandana mishra and then with his wife ubhaya bharati resulting in their conversion from karma mimamsa to advaita vedanta followed by their sanyasa 
in the Vedantic tradition. They have been accounted as great events of Sri Shankara's life. We will not go into their details. Mandana Mishra became another one of his favorite disciples under the name Sri Sureshwar Acharya. Back once more in Kashi, Acharya Shankara resided with one of his disciples near the Manikarnika Ghat. Here during one of his visits to the Kashi Vishwanatha temple, he was blocked on the way by a chandala or an untouchable holding a dog. Sri Shankara requested the chandala to move aside since he would not touch untouchables. The chandala on the other hand with a smile asked Sri Shankara, O Shankara, the great exponent of Advaita Vedanta, when even you are blinded by outward appearance and by Maya, how can you preach the truth? Sri Shankara was shocked. But immediately he realized his folly. He understood that the one who is standing before him is not just another mortal being. He offered his pranams at the feet of the untouchable. And being overwhelmed, Shankara instantly sang a hymn, which later came to be known as the Manisha Panchakam. The untouchable was none other than the Lord Shiva himself, who said to have appeared in order to remove the last trace of the ego in Sri Shankara. Acharya Shankara continued his travels, better known as his Digvijaya, or the victory around the corners of the land. Being uniquely authentic in his words and deeds, Sri Shankara refuted all the objectionable practices of the society in the name of religion. He condemned the unshastric or non-scriptural rituals and re-established the sacred Vedic observances and also attempted to root out the evil practices of the society in the name of tradition. It can be stated that Sri Shankara in a short time could restore the age-old Vedic religion in its pure and pristine form to a great extent and also teach his countrymen the philosophical approach of Vedanta to the life's situations. Later, in order to safeguard and maintain the purity of the Vedic scriptures and spread the message of Advaita Vedanta, Acharya Sri Shankara also established four muts or four Hindu monasteries in the four different directions of India. One at Dwaraka in the west, one at Puri in the east, one at Badrinath in the north and one at Sringeri in the south. He entrusted these four muts in the hands of four of his eminent and prominent disciples, Sri Sureshwar Acharya, Sri Patmabada, Sri Hastamalaka and Sri Totaka Acharya. His next journey was to Kashmir, where he again held his philosophical debates and that was followed by a visit to Nepal where he had a vision of the Tatreya. Acharya Shankara also installed the auspicious Sri Chakra 
in many well known temples like Kamakshi temple of Kanchipuram, Naranarayana temple of Badrinath, Guheshwari temple in Nepal, etc. There is this dispute about the last journey of Sri Shankaracharya. The most authentic account among them claims that Sri Shankara disappeared near the Kedarnath temple of Uttarakhand and he was never to be seen again. Apt to the legendary saying, Muhurtam Jolitam Shreyam Natu Dhumayitum Chiram. It is worthwhile to flame forth instantly than to smoke away for ages. Muhurtam Jolitam Shreyam Natu Dhumayitum Chiram. Acharya Shankara did not live for a long, he passed away when he was just 32. The very many incidents and the mythological tales attributed to Sri Shankaracharya vary from one biography to the other. So also is the narrative about his last days, about his Mahasamadhi etc. One should not be just carried away by reading those narratives. We should rather concentrate more on the positive side of his life and legacy. His message embedded in his works, they are what's important, nothing else matters. The greatness of Adi Shankara is, he was able to perceive the different dimensions of truth, the reality. He was open to accept the views of others if he found them to be right. He disagreed only when they overly presumed and made out that their conceptions and perceptions are exhaustive and final. Sri Shankaracharya gave a place to every variety of thought and practice of India in his system. He believed that the Vedic religion is a storehouse of principles and precepts suited to every human temperament and helpful to every individual's spiritual development at every stage of his or her life. Realizing the significance and fullness of the Vedic religion Acharya Shankara was able to reconcile with all creeds and sects of Sanatana Dharma. Though he was an Advaidin in the true sense of the term, his universality of mind made him acceptable to all and eventually established himself as the Jagat Guru or the teacher of the mankind. Though he realized the nameless and formless aspect of the Absolute as the Supreme Reality, respecting the views of everyone, he established a panorama of six common formful divinities of Sanatana Dharma. The Ganesha, the Surya, the Divine Mother etc. and accomplished a title as the Shanmata Sthapana Acharya, the establisher of the sixfold religious followings. Sri Shankara Acharya is regarded also as the founder of the Dashanami Sampradaya of the Hindu monasticism. This was an attempt to organize all the monks of the Vedantic tradition under one umbrella. As an intellectual and as a logician, he is unparalleled in the history of Acharyas. At the same time, we also know him to be a devout and emotionally unequaled teacher when it comes to the practicality of religion. His poetries, 
hymns or stotras on various gods and goddesses of Hinduism stands as testimony that though an Acharya of the highest order, he was very humane in his character. From such perspectives, one cannot place Sri Shankaracharya or Adi Shankara entirely under any specific category. He was much more than just an Advaita Acharya. Thank you. Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Tat Sat